Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Well, so-so solar charging conditions today. A lot of dark clouds, a few showers rolling through. Starting a little earlier than normal in making a video, and that's because there was a interruption to the morning routine. Couldn't get the coffee made. That's no good. Several months ago, I introduced you guys to this 25.6 volt lithium iron phosphate battery, 100 amp hour capacity from Time USB. It's been working flawlessly for all these months. And every day, this little system has been producing the most important of things, and that is the morning elixir coffee. <laughs> This is a small little standalone system. Everything's been working just fabulously the whole months that it's been in operation and every single morning it makes several pots of coffee. No problems whatsoever. This morning, however, I heard an audible pop and the inverter made the chirp like it does uh, and then stopped working. And I went and I looked, I didn't throw any breakers, no fuses, everything's working fine. Uh, it's still charging the battery up, 300 watts of solar outside, going through that 7515 smart solar charge controller from Victron. No problems whatsoever. But, as I will show you, That inverter is dead. So I'm assuming because everything is looking okay and the battery is still charging and all the breakers and fuses are intact, must have popped a fuse in this 800 watt pure sine wave inverter from Reliable Electric. I run several of these brands of uh, Pure sine wave inverters from Reliable Electric. I have never had a single problem with one of them. I have fully one, two, three, four of them in operation 24 seven. This one doesn't run 24 seven. It's more for intermittent use. It makes coffee every morning and a few other things depending uh, what we wanna do out here. Never had a problem. That coffee maker pulls about 670 watts continuous making coffee never once uh, not produced. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect everything, pop this cover open, and I'm hoping what I find is a popped fuse in there. All of these inverters from Reliable Electric always come with extra fuses. I've never had to replace one, and I'm hoping that that's all I'm going to have to do today to get this back up and running. And before I disconnect the whole system in order to open up that inverter, the first thing I want to do is look at the Victron app to see if anything uh, was recorded that would lead me to think that it's other than the fuse blown in the inverter. And you can see right now, 45 watts, as I showed you, it's fairly cloudy today, not a great solar day, but 44 some watts coming in off those 300 watts worth of panels. Got 43 volts coming in, well within the parameters of the charge controller. Everything looks to be f working fine. The battery is charging. But here's what I wanna do is I wanna go up to the history and see if it caught anything, you know, kind of crazy. So this last, bar in the bar graph uh, shows you what's going on today. I've so far caught 180 watt hours. The max coming in off those solar panels was 261 watts briefly earlier. And everything looks fine. I didn't register any weird uh, voltage spike. Everything looks absolutely fine. So that also 
just makes me believe that it was a fuse that popped in that inverter because everything on this system looks good. I've inspected all of these fuses. Fuses look good. No breaker has tripped. Fuse looks good. No, no breaker has tripped. So, before I open that up though, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and shut everything off. First thing I'm gonna do, shut off these uh, solar panels with this isolator switch, like that. Now there should be no power coming in. There is no power coming in, as we can see on the app, zero. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to uh, start popping these breakers. Breaker popped, breaker popped. And now I'm gonna go ahead and even uh, disconnect the battery cables before I open up that inverter. And as you can see with everything uh, disconnected now from the current of the battery, the app is not showing anything. It's trying to connect, but all power to the charge controller now has been turned off. And you can see there are no lights on that charge controller now where there was a charging light, the blue charging light was on. So all of the system is now disconnected. I can go ahead, disconnect these cables, and then I'm gonna pop this cover open and hopefully find one burned out fuse. <laughs> okay, so there were eight screws, very small screws, screws holding this cover into place. And <clears throat> unfortunately, they're very, very small, as you can see here. Very small screws, pretty soft. Uh, even with a, a Phillips head that fit that perfectly, uh, a couple of them wanted to strip a little bit, and on one, it would not even come out. So I had to pry it off and pull that screw through the case in order to get it. And I'll show you where that 140 amp fuse is. It's a little hard to see. The lighting's not so good. I'll put the tip of the screwdriver right on it, right there. That's the 40 amp fuse. So I'm gonna pull that out right now. That's a little better view of it there. The, had to adjust some lighting to see it, but anyway, right there, that little orange fuse right there. So I'm gonna pull that out. There we go. And yeah, that's blown just as I thought. Makes me think that that might be an issue since they send these inverters out with a bag full of these 40 amp fuses. But like I said, this is the first time that's ever happened to me. And why, after so many months of this inverter working perfectly at blue today, I have no idea. I don't believe that Coffee Maker did anything unusual. It's always pulled the exact same wattage. But today, for whatever reason, one of these popped. And they always send a few of them. So... Anyway, I wish they would put some serious screws in there for when we have to take it apart and put a new fuse in. And so, because uh, those were very soft, easy to strip. I was so careful, had perfectly fitting screwdriver, like I said, but uh, they could put a little bit better screws in these. And let's take a quick look at the difference. You can see this one is charred on the inside. If you look real close, you can see that the, you know, the connection 
which is very intact on this new one that we're going to put in is fine. This one, not so much. So that was a fuse that was blown. I figured that was the only thing it could be. And we're going to pop this one in right now and that inverter should be working fine after that. Okay, now I'm going to reconnect the uh, battery cables again and start flipping this uh, back into action. Okay, well that quickly escalated after hooking my cables back up. Uh, the first thing I did was flip that breaker back on uh, to get the battery power back up to the inverter and before I could even uh, get to the solar panels. The fuse that I replaced, which is the one on the left, it blew immediately as soon as there was battery power back. The one on the right was the one that I was replacing and the one on the left is even more fried. It made a very loud pop, uh, made me jump. And the only thing I can see now, if we look back in there, see if that'll focus right up in there, you can see those two clips where these fuses plug into. The only thing that I see now is on that top clip. If you look to the right of that, there is a hole in that circuit board where on the bottom clip to the right, that hole is filled with what appears to just be some solder. I do not see that in the other hole. And that's the only thing that I see different. So, yeah, I don't know what's shorting that fuse out. Something is, maybe it's that hole, maybe there's a break in the connection somewhere that was supposed to be some solder that has popped out or something that quickly went over my head. I don't know what else to check, but I was thinking about sticking another fuse in there and, and uh, showing you guys, but, uh, it was frightening enough just for me, and I don't want to do it again. I'm calling this a dead inverter. The blown fuse, I did try to replace the very second I turned that battery back on. It blew again with the inverter off, mind you. So it's raining a little bit and kind of dark out there, but I am still charging the battery, which is down to about uh, 30%, so I'm going to go ahead and keep charging the battery. There's nothing wrong with any of the voltages that I see. I still have never seen anything weird uh, coming in at all. Everything looks good on that end, so I'm going to go ahead and let the uh, battery charge up before I uh, disconnect it, so then I can store it uh, on a little bit more full than it is because it's getting down where it needs a good charge. But I'm going to pull this inverter out and uh, contact Reliable, try and get a replacement for that. Not sure why now it's popping that 40 amp fuse. All of this circuitry that we're looking at is, is above my pay grade to be able to further diagnose this. I was hoping by pulling that blown fuse out, by just sticking another one in there, it would work. But the minute there's power coming in there, it blew again. Loud pop with the inverter off. So there's, there's a definite problem with that. First time I've ever encountered a problem with Reliable. And like I said, I found a few things I'm disappointed with along the way, those very soft screws. Uh, very difficult to get that cover off with. Um, yeah, sometimes things happen. All right. Dang, I wanted it to be an easy fix. <laughs> well, sometimes that's the way it goes. I've been very, very lucky and have had very few failures. Why that thing failed after months and months of Working perfectly, there's an obvious short in that inverter somewhere. Replacing a easy to replace fuse for the most part. 
uh, did not remedy the situation. So there's something, like I said, beyond my pay grade going on there. I'll try and get it figured out and report back to you guys. All right. At least we're catching some water today. So that's a good thing. Catch you guys later. Aloha.